A robust, imposing ship capable of transforming tanks, armored vehicles and artillery pieces into scrap metal. A simple but strong plane, which can fly even if its fuselage looks like Swiss cheese due to dozens of ammunition hits. A combat ship that does not depend on long runways to take off or land, becoming a key piece in any strategy. We're not talking about the legendary A-10 Thunderbolt of the United States, but its lost and lesser-known brother, the PZL-230 Scorpion, an impressive Polish ship that almost challenged the Warthog for the throne as best close air support aircraft, but never went into mass production. In this new video from Military Aviation we are going to get to know its history in depth and why the most ambitious Polish air project in history failed. The fragility experienced by the member countries of the Soviet Union at the time of its disappearance was remarkable. Poland was no exception, its dreams of achieving full independence had to be sustained with an update of its army, and that included acquiring ships at the height of the new era. At that time, British developments of aircraft capable of taking off and landing on short runways were booming, allowing close air support in practically any corner of the planet. The idea of a robust plane that destroyed tanks and armor was irresistible. With that in mind, Poland gave the green light to a development program to which numerous companies were invited, including PZL, which presented an interesting design that would be capable of taking off on runways of just 250 meters. The plane would have a maximum speed of 640 km per hour carrying 2,000 kg of explosives of all kinds. If this destructive power was not enough, the Polish design also featured 25mm guns to open fire on ground targets. A car? A transport vehicle? A small unit? All of these targets would bite the dust. But the best thing about PZL's proposal is that his plane would be cheap and easy to build thanks to the application of modular principles, which allow entire parts to be replaced without damaging the base of the fuselage. The project was given the name PZL-230 Scorpion and two models were proposed, one for attack and one for training, but they were not alone in the competition. Also strong in the Polish program was the PZL Cobra, which had several interesting qualities. Thanks to the design of its dorsal part, the plane could carry much more weight at a higher speed. Of course, this had a production cost that practically doubled that of the humble PZL-230. Even so, some of the Cobra's innovations were retained in the final version chosen by the Polish army. The Polish Ministry of Defense required the device to have a maximum speed of 1,000 km per hour, an operational range of 300 km and a capacity to carry up to 4,000 kg of explosive equipment. To keep up with these new and demanding requirements, the Scorpion had to be redesigned based on observations taken from the Cobra. Because of this it became a heavier plane, so the engineers had to modify the entire power plant. They said goodbye to the twin rear-mounted jets, instead choosing Pratt & Whitney PW305 turbofan engines, which were moved to the center of the frame. As we told you at the beginning of the video, one of the central objectives of this program was to find a spacecraft capable of short takeoffs and landings. It was one of the immovable requirements, and that is why the distance required to take off only happened to be between 300 and 400 meters. It was a figure somewhat higher than the initial proposal, but more than acceptable if we take into account the type of ships that Poland operated at that time. But if this still doesn't sound like much to you, the Ministry of Defense also became interested in stealth technology. The country was not capable of developing a stealth craft from scratch, but they were able to provide the fuselage with certain angles and a flattened design that would significantly reduce the radar, thermal and infrared signature produced by the Scorpion. In addition, the fuselage was covered in a special black paint capable of absorbing radar waves, and the engines were coated to make their heat less visible to thermal detection systems. 
The Polish engineers really wanted to go down in the history books, since they even incorporated the most modern computers of the time with fly-by-wire technology and all kinds of pilot assistance, both for flight and for attacks. This version is known as the PZL-230F, with the F for its aforementioned capabilities, of which only one version was built in 1992. The PZL-230 Scorpion was a combat animal that featured not only an internal 25mm cannon, but also adopted the Titanic 30mm GAU-8 Avenger as an external weapon. The Avenger is a rotary cannon made up of seven barrels that provides a brutal rate of fire of 4,200 rounds per minute, using 30 by 173mm ammunition. It is the same cannon used by the North American A-10, and for which it went down in history as an executioner of tanks and armored vehicles during the Gulf War. America's Warthog is often considered the most powerful and robust close air support aircraft in history, but had it gone into mass production, the Scorpion could have challenged for this throne. Now we come to the point where the story goes from abrupt rise to fall from grace. The Scorpion was a spectacular ship designed in record time by a company with little experience in the field. By all accounts it was an achievement on the part of the engineers, but even so it had critical errors that would have affected its operation in the long run. The main one was in the engines, the PW305 would not be enough to mobilize the mass of 11 tons of weight. The Ministry of Defense then opted for the Honeywell LF-507 engines, which did not enter the fuselage and significantly reduced the stealthiness of the design. This was not such a serious problem as the obsession with stealth in this type of aircraft was due more to the times and the political situation in Poland than to any real need, a highly heavy and robust close air support aircraft does not need to be invisible to be lethal. The best example of this is still the mighty A-10. The final nails in the Scorpion's coffin were hammered by lack of money and lack of infrastructure, two ills that plagued the greatest powers as well as the smallest countries. Poland did not have enough money to face a long-term program, it depended entirely on investments and potential purchases from other countries, negotiations that never came. The problems with the engine raised doubts in the potential buyers of the Scorpion. Also, Poland is not known as a nation with a powerful aerospace industry, and in the early 1990s it did not have the experience or manpower to start mass production of a state-of-the-art fighter jet. Finally, many politicians and businessmen were still loyal to the Soviet regime and were reluctant to invest in a project whose initial objective was to reinforce Polish independence from the Soviet Union. Without money, without manpower and already without market interest, the Scorpion was a last-generation failure. That was how the Polish A-10 was never able to dominate the skies. To this day, many experts say that if economic conditions had been good, the Polish design could have become a successful competitor to the American ships of the time. Unfortunately for the Poles, we will never know. We have reached the end of this video, if you liked it, we invite you to subscribe and activate notifications. We'll meet again in the next episode of Military Aviation.